Hi everyone, my name is Midori Gonzalez. I am one of the coordinators for Cal State Fullerton's Environmental Sustainability Commission. And for our last meeting of the semester today, we will be talking about sustainable technology and electronics usage. So first, you might be wondering why is sustainability and technology important? Well, there are a few reasons. Our world is becoming increasingly digital and technology continues to advance. Electronic devices generate e-waste and therefore pollution when they become no longer usable. It requires a lot of energy to mine and manufacture valuable materials that are used in electronics, such as plastics, metals, and glass. And lastly, many of the metals that are mined for use in electronics are finite natural resources. Where does our electricity come from? In this region, our power comes from Southern California Edison, or SCE, and they have a 50,000 square mile service area, you can see on the map down there. They provide electricity for over 15 million people within that territory, and they have been working for years to increase the percentage of clean energy that they deliver to the customers within the service area. There is a California law that says they must get power from 60% clean sources by 2030 and 100% clean sources by 2040. Last year, SCE announced that almost half of the energy they delivered in 2019 was from carbon-free sources. And the breakdown is that 48% came from solar, geothermal, hydroelectric, biomass, bio-waste, and nuclear sources, while 52% still came from polluting natural gas and other sources. But they are making progress, and it seems like they will be able to reach those goals that um, the California law says that they must by 2030 and 2045. And so next, I'm going to talk about some surprising ways that we might be using technology unsustainably. You could be leaving electronics plugged in when they're not in use, leaving lights on when you're not in the room, upgrading to new devices even though your current device still works perfectly fine, and dropping off e-waste at irresponsible recycling facilities. Recycling is in quotes because sometimes these facilities might ship the parts to poorer countries with less environmental regulation and less protection of human rights. And so people are uh, sorting through these toxic metals from e-waste and they're making very little money. Here are some more very surprising ways um, that we might be using technology unsustainably. And personally, I was very shocked when I learned about these. So the first is staying subscribed to unwanted email lists that you never read. Data centers or servers are used to store, transfer, process, and analyze internet data. And this whole process consumes large amounts of electricity. A regular email produces four grams of carbon dioxide. A large email with attachments produces up to 12 times more than that. And 246 billion emails around the world daily leads to about 986,000 tons of carbon going into the atmosphere daily just from sending emails. Another really surprising thing is excessive social media or internet use. One Google search can produce 0.2 to 7 grams of carbon dioxide, and posting a photo on Instagram produces 0.15 grams of carbon dioxide, while scrolling for one minute produces 1.5 grams. So now we are all wondering, what can we do about it? Here are some quick changes that you can do at home to be a bit more sustainable with your electronics use. You can unplug electronics when they're done charging. You can unplug small appliances when you're not using them. You can wear layers, use a blanket, open or close your windows, things like that, so that you only use the heater and air conditioner when you really need it. Um, in addition to that, only use your heater and air conditioner when you're at home. 
So for summer, a good rule of thumb is to set your thermostat to 78 or higher, unless you can stand warmer than that. Usually in summer, personally, I set it to about 85. And in winter, I actually have it around like 68 because I use uh, sweaters and blankets um, until like it's really too cold in winter. So um, yeah, just be mindful of the things that you can do to keep your temperature comfortable without going straight to using the heater or AC with the intention of saving some electricity. You can turn off lights when you leave the room. You can take advantage of natural daylight for as much of the day as possible by um, having your curtains or your blinds or whatever it is open and um, doing your activities that require light during the hours of natural daylight. And here's some more quick changes for your personal electronics usage. So you can unsubscribe from unwanted emails. And the statistic that I saw is that 75% of emails actually go unread. So how many of those are just taking up all that server space? You could be deleting them and clearing some of that mental clutter, some of that email clutter, and also helping the environment. Be mindful of how much time you're spending on social media and consider using an eco-friendly search engine for some of your web browsing. For example, the Ecosia, sorry, the Ecosia extension on Google Chrome powers their search engine with their own solar panels and they plant trees for your web searches. It takes about 45 web searches to plant one tree. You can also use energy saving modes on your electronic devices and hold off on upgrading your devices until you really need to. And then here are some investment changes. I'm referring to them as investment changes because they do require some amount of money to be spent on them. While the previously mentioned um, changes or switches can be done um, either low cost or no cost and can be done kind of relatively quickly. So you can use a surge protector or a power strip. And the benefits to this are that you can plug in many things at once and there's no need to unplug when you're not in use, just flip the switch. And next time you need to get a new electronic device, consider buying a refurbished item instead of a brand new one. And if you need a new phone case, consider getting a biodegradable one. But please don't buy a new phone case if your current phone case is still usable. When you're done with your biodegradable phone case, make sure to dispose of it properly so it can actually biodegrade and be used to make compost. It will never be able to biodegrade and turn into compost or something usable if it just makes it into the trash, into the landfill with the rest of the garbage that you throw away. So the last thing is you can install solar panels at home if you are financially able to do so. Now here are some places where you can dispose of e-waste. You can search for locations near you on Cal Recycles Where Do I Recycle e-waste page. You can use Earth 911 website to search for locations near you that will take specific items. You can check the city website for your city since they might have a recycling program. And you can also take your items to Staples, Best Buy, and office supply stores because those stores are sometimes likely to have a recycling program. So I'll show you um, this page. Here we go. This one actually. I've already searched in Orange County. So this is the Cal Recycle page. You can search by location for places that you can take uh, things that you would like to recycle. And then from the Earth 911 website, you can search for the specific type of item that you would like to uh, recycle, as well as the zip code and it will come up with um, a list of places that you can take your things. And then here's some reputable places to buy refurbished electronics. You can consider Best Buy, Staples, Newegg.com, Backmarket.com, and device manufacturers may have a certified renewed or refurbished products section on their website. For example, Apple, Samsung, Dell, Companies like that may have this type of section on their website that you can uh, look through and purchase from. 
here's the sources. And this is for our discussion that we'll return to later. And here is a recap of our fall 2021 semester environmental sustainability commission meetings in october we started with sustainability month we talked about how to be sustainable around the home we made a diy lip scrub with kitchen ingredients that was great for leftovers we talked about how to have a sustainable halloween and decorated pumpkins and learn how to repurpose them afterwards we learned from our Cal State Fullerton Office of Sustainable Career Panel and talked about how our campus is being sustainable and what kind of jobs are available in the sustainability industry. And we had our guest speakers from Veterans for Peace, and they talked about the Climate Crisis and Militarism Project. And then in November, we had Native American Heritage Month, where we talked about Indigenous sustainability and what we can learn about sustainability from their cultures. And now looking forward to spring 2021, here's some things that we are planning that our commission is so excited for. We will be teaching how to grow plants. Uh, we will have a panel for women and sustainability. We will do some upcycled art projects. We will learn about waste management and recycling. We will talk about ocean conservation and even have a beach cleanup day. And we will have a documentary discussion as well as collaborations with other commissions and centers on campus. We are really looking forward to all these fun and exciting events, and we are hoping to see you next semester. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for listening, and thank you if you've joined us throughout this semester as well. See you next time.